What's up, Titans? Welcome back to Titan Sports, bringing you the best coverage of Cal State Fullerton Athletics. I'm Chloe Abbott. And I'm Amanda Garcia. I don't know about you, Chloe, but I'm so excited for baseball season. Me too. The boys did great this weekend, and we have a lot of good new freshmen. Softball, as well as doing great, a lot of walk-off wins. Yeah, and then also, with baseball, brings warmer weather, hopefully. I am so sick of this cold weather. I know. Me too. I'm ready for some sunshine. All right, let's get an update on what's going on with Fullerton Athletics. Fullerton's baseball team brought the heat to Arizona this weekend at the inaugural MLB4 Collegiate Tournament, where they went 2-1. They are currently ranked at number 25 in the D1Baseball.com Top 25 rankings. The Titans opened up the tournament taking down number 19 TCU. Sophomore pitcher Tanner Bybee threw a gem going six scoreless innings. The pitching staff shut out TCU 2-0. And junior Daniel Cope contributed by hitting a home run. The second game was a different story where the Titans fell to number one Vanderbilt. They couldn't put a run on the board until the sixth inning. The Titans comeback attempt started in the seventh when freshman Jason Brando hit a grand slam and senior Jake Pavlicic hit a home run right after. Pavlicic would finish the day four and five, but the Titans would fall short 14 to nine. The last game of the tournament ended on a high note for Fullerton taking down Virginia in a comeback win in the ninth inning. The Titans rallied back from being down 5-3 in the top of the ninth. Thanks to an RBI double from freshman ja Jason Brando, an RBI singles from freshman Jackson Lyon and junior Daniel Cope. The Titans came out on top, winning 6-5. The Titans were supposed to play against Washington on Monday in what's being called the Super Rematch, but the game was postponed because of poor field conditions. The rematch is tentatively scheduled for Monday, May 20th. Cal State Fullerton softball team hit the road for the first time this season. This past weekend, the Titans participated in the Helen Brand Invitational at the University of Arizona. Fullerton started day one strong by beating Illinois, Chicago, and New Mexico. During the first game against UIC Flames, Cal State Fullerton were the comeback kids and won the game with a score of 12 to 8. Irie Ciofelli, Ari Williams, and Sam Kennedy all contributed to the game win. Alexa Neal was the slugger that saved the game with the winning RBI. The second game for Cal State Fullerton was a battle against New Mexico. The Lobos scored two at the start of the game. Fullerton's Ari Williams back at it again, fired right back with her second home run of the season and tied it up. The Titans would keep their momentum going to end the game with an overall score of 6-2. to Day two of the Inv Invitational, the Titans split the doubleheader with a 5-4 walk-off win against South Florida. USF started the game strong with a 2-0 lead by the second inning. Sam Kennedy tied it up with a two-run home run. It was a battle to the end where tie they tied it up on their last out. And Ari Williams led the Titans to victory after hitting the game-winning RBI triple. Cal State Fullerton lost their last game of the Invitational to the host, number nine, University of Arizona, where pitcher Taylor Dawkins made her fourth start of the season. The Wildcats' batting lineup brought the heat against the Titans, winning the game with a shutout score of 6-0. Titans will return to Anderson Family Field on Wednesday, where they are hosting San Diego State at 6 p.m. Saturday night, the women's basketball team hosted CSUN. Let's get straight into the highlights. Celebrating Women's Empowerment Day, the women's basketball team hosted CSUN in search of breaking their five-game losing streak. The ball has been thrown. Let's get straight into the action. Cal State Fullerton started with great intensity, going on a 6-0 run and creating multiple forced turnovers. Due to the high pressing high up the court, they were able to capitalize on these turnovers, firing up the crowd. Senior guard Jade Vega contributed with four of those six points to take an early lead in the game. Vega would end the game with 12 points, celebrating her accomplishment of reaching 1,000 points with the Titans. The CSUN Matadors would respond back with guard Serafina Malupe, shooting three for five from behind the arc. Malupe finished the game with 23 points. She wasn't the only one on fire. Titans forward Amy Buck scored her 12 points shooting 4 for 7 from 3. Two more Titans would be in double-digit scoring. 
Sophomore guard Reyna Perez would hit this corner three to give the Titans an eight-point lead at halftime. A promising third quarter start would give the Titans a 47-37 lead, the biggest lead in the game. Senior center Deja Smith, who also achieved reaching 1,000 points with the Titans, scored six of her 13 points to keep the Titans ahead. The second half of the third and the entire fourth quarter were a completely different story. Season took control and outscored the Titans 40-23 in the second half. Season Shannon Fluker contributed with 18 points to finish the game. The Titans were being dominated on offensive rebounds and, in a blink of an eye, they were down by nine. Unfortunately for the Titans, CSUN made their clutch free throws and defeated the Titans 73-64. Now let's toss it over to Kush and Nathan to give us an update on Fullerton basketball with this week's Inside the Basket. Thank you, ladies, and welcome to Inside the Basket. I'm your host, Kush Parikh, with my co-host... Nathan McHugh. All right, Nathan, let's get straight into women's basketball. You know, they start, They had a great preseason, but now in conference season, they've been 3-7, and seven, started off hot 3-1, and one, but they've now lost six in a row. What have they been struggling with in the past couple weeks? Uh, two things. They've been struggling with their defense. I mean, in their three wins in conference play, they've given up, they didn't give up uh, 70 points or more in any of those games. Uh, during the six-game losing streak, the streak, they've given up at least over 70 points uh, three times, and then in the, the few times that they've uh, not given that they've played better defense, uh, it's been their offense in that fourth quarter that's uh, stalled. They've had back-to-back -back fourth quarter leads against um, at UC Irvine and um, a week about a week and a half ago, and then about uh, this past Saturday they uh, had a, a one-point lead at, at home against CSUN, and they had an eight point halftime lead against CSUN. So they've had, they've had you know, significant leads, but haven't been able to, to close out the game uh, with, with, the, with the W. And I think you made a great point about their offensive stalling, which makes, does make a lot of sense because Deja Smith, their center, is leading the Big West in field goal percentage. They have Amy Book, the freshman, who's been scorching hot behind the arc. She's uh, second in the Big West in three-point percentage. And then they have two of the top five assist leaders in Reina Perez and Jade Vega. So talk about that offensive stalling. They're putting up the numbers, but what is happening in the second half that is causing them to stall? Um, I think they're just uh, maybe not getting Deja Smith the ball enough, or maybe teams, you know, in the second half have, have kind of uh, game plan more and kind of, um, you know, they've played several teams twice. So the more, the more they play um, the teams, the more they, they start to know what Cal State Fullerton wants to do and kind of trying to take them out of their offense. And maybe turnovers early in the games has kind of, uh, kind of discouraged them to, from uh, getting the ball to Deja. Um, and she's um, over 52% field goal percentage, but only 13 points. So maybe she's not getting enough field goal attempts or teams are, are making other players um, beat them besides uh, Deja Smith. Now, coming down the stretch, they're on the brink of potentially making the Big West Tournament or not making the Big West Tournament. So what does Coach Rada need to change up his game plan to make this tournament? Uh, I think they just have to kind of see what they did well in those first uh, three conference uh, games and the three-and-one start and kind of incorporate that or kind of just, um, you know, focus on the positive, focus on the three-and-one start, not the six-game losing streak. Um, and you know they're seventh in the the Big West. I think they're about a game, a game and a half out of the um, ahead of the ninth place team. So I think they, as long as they just um, you know focus on, because they played well the last two games. They've had chances to win. So there's a lot of that, the film that they can watch and uh, that they can uh, build off of. So I think they're they're moving in the right direction, but. Um, yeah, well, it's tough. Once they um, once they get out of a losing streak, I think they'll they'll play better. But um, yeah, it's tough. I'm sure their their confidence isn't as high as it was early in the year. But one win could change that for sure. Exactly. They just need to turn things around before uh, the conference tournament comes around. So let's jump into men's basketball, which has been on the opposite end of the spectrum. They had a tough preseason, but that's because they had one of the hardest schedules in the nation. And now coming into conference play, I think that's helped. They lost their first two games but now they've won their last eight out of nine games. What have they been doing well through this hot streak of theirs? 
I think they're playing more as a team. I think they've had, you know, in, in the last two games, uh, they've been playing, uh, you know, Kyle Allman Jr. and Cleo Maud more in like a point guard role. I mean, against, against Long Beach at home, they combined for 12 assists. Allman Jr. had seven, Cleo Maud had five. And uh, I think the other, I think they had about nine assists uh, in the game against CSUN. So they're, um, they have more playmakers and it, it, it allows uh, Austin Awishka to not have to play point guard as much and, and have more um, of an effect defensively and not, not have to expend as much energy offensively. Yeah, and speaking of Long Beach and CSUN, they swept them both this season. Long Beach's first time since 2010, sweeping the rivals. Uh, and they've been, Long Beach and CSUN have tough opponents. They have a couple players that are leading the nation or in the top 10 in the nation in free throw percentage, you know, points per game, rebounds. So they're going up against tough opponents. One guy that, or a couple of guys that have been catching my eye with the men's basketball team is their youngsters, Josh Pitts and Wayne Arnold, who have come off the bench these last couple games and sp produced a spark plug off the bench. So they've been great for that second unit, uh, plugging them in when Kyle Allman's not having a good game like he did against Long Beach. You know, Khalil Ahmad had a rough shooting night. He still had 19 points, but Wayne Arnold came out in that first half with 10 points. Josh Pitts last night in CSUN had a great job uh, on defense and offense. So I think their bench has really been helping them out this season. So what can you tell us from the big three of – uh, the men's basketball team with Kyle Allman, Khalil Ahmad, and Jack, especially Jackson Rowe, who's been, I think, the quiet story of this season. Yeah, he has. He's uh, probably been their most consistent player. And, um, yeah, and uh, they've been – the great thing about this team is lately they've been able to win games without all three of them playing well or shooting the ball well. Um, as you mentioned, Wayne Arnold and, and Josh Pitts, um, they were key in the, the CSUN game. Uh, they they, they kind of struggled early. I mean, CSUN was up 10-2, to 2, but then once Fullerton kind of, uh, they called timeout and they kind of settled down. And really what was key was their transition game. I mean, they even, it wasn't even necessarily off of a turnover, but every time they got the rebound, they looked to push it and they got a lot of points in transition. Um, and even the shots they didn't make, those, you know, that's kind of what they want to do. And, um, you know, Khalil Ahmad, he, um, I think he had four points, but I know he didn't make any shots uh, from the field. But I mean, the fact that they could win a game on the road against a, a quality opponent uh, without uh, without one of their big three playing well um, says a lot. And I think that Wayne Arnold is going to be the key going forward and towards the Big West tournament because uh, he hasn't really had a lot of playing time. Um, so, but he's starting to get in rhythm. He's got his confidence. And, and Josh Pitts as well. The more playing time he gets, the better the better this team is. And they've uh, they've started to separate from everybody um, besides UC Irvine in the Big West Conference. And uh, they're only going to get better um, because Wayne and Josh are probably going to see a lot of minute, uh, you know, a lot more minutes going forward through the Big West tournament. Yeah, and Wayne Arnold has not been looking like a freshman. He's been looking like a true veteran on this Fullerton team. Well, Fullerton sits at number two right now behind UC Irvine. They take on UC Davis uh, on Thursday, who's on a five-game winning streak, and Santa Barbara on Saturday, who's sitting in fifth place. So it will be some tough games. We'll keep an eye on that. But that's it for this episode of Inside the Basket. I'm your host, Kush Parikh, with my co-host... Nathan McHugh. Now we'll send it over to Alex Lustig with this week's In Case You Missed It. Alex? Thank you, guys. My name is Alex Lustig. I'm here with this week's edition of In Case You Missed It. Let's take a look at the games from this past week. Tipping off with men's basketball, they had a nail-biter against Long Beach State here in the Titan Gym. The game finished with an 85-82 victory. They also beat CSUN to add another win to the column by a final of 78-71. It's a season sweep against both teams this year. Running over to the indoor track and field, Aisha Ham tied her school record in the high jump at the Air Force, Invite, uh, Air Force Open in Colorado. She recorded a jump of 5'10 which is 1.79 meters. That's a pretty high standard to reach. Serving up another win, the women's tennis team almost got a bagel at home against UC Davis by a final of 5-1. Yeah, bagel is a tennis term. It's also a delicious breakfast and best served hot. Swinging things off with women's golf, they finished 8th at the Texas State Invitational. Elsa Lundquist finished in 5th overall to help the, the team finish in the top 10. Finally, we move over to men's golf, where they scored first place on the score sheet, 
at the UCI Anteater Invitational. They finished 3 under par on the first day and 1 under par on the second day. I guess you could say the clubs were in full swing. Want to stay up to date with upcoming games? We turn it over to Jacqueline Davis with this week's Titan Timeline. Jacqueline? Thanks, Alex. These are the up and coming games for this week's edition of Titan Timeline. Let's start off on the mound. Baseball season has finally come. The Titans are on the road competing in the Tony Gwen Classic in San Diego from the 22nd to the 24th. They will be taking on Missouri State, Fresno State, and Oklahoma. Let's cross it over to basketball. Men's basketball is playing at home on the 21st against UC Davis. This game will be a part of a double header with women basketball for Scout Day. The 23rd men's basketball will be playing at UC Santa Barbara to take on the Gauchos. A part of the double header on Thursday, women's basketball will host UC Santa Barbara. They will then travel to Santa Luis Obispo where they will play Cal Poly on Saturday the 23rd. Women's golf is traveling to Seal Beach to play in the Gold Rush Invitational between the 25th and the 26th. Taking it over to the circle, women's softball is at home versus San Diego State the 20th at 6 p.m. The 23rd and the 24th, they will be competing in the Mary Nutter Classic in Cathedral City. They will be competing in an exhibition against the Japanese national team on the 25th at 6 p.m. Serving it off to women's tennis, they will be competing against Loyola Marymount at 1.30 p.m. here at home. Running to Seattle, Washington, indoor track and field is competing in the MPSF Championships the 22nd and the 23rd. That's a wrap for this week's Titan Timeline. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, folks, that's all we have for today. Thanks for tuning in for today's episode. You can watch our past episodes and game packages on our YouTube channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at CSUF Sports. Like us on Facebook to stay connected with us. On behalf of Titan Sports, I'm Chloe Abbott. And I'm Amanda Garcia. Be sure to keep those tests up. See you guys next time.